In the 80s and 90s, TGI Fridays was a pretty cool place to be, but the times, they are a change in. In 2017, they saw a decline in sales of 5.1% and has struggled with growth over the last several years. Here are all of the reasons that TGI Fridays is struggling. The first TGI Fridays located on Manhattan's Upper East Side wasn't a family restaurant at all. It was a wildly popular singles bar created by a young man with zero restaurant experience. Alan Stillman opened the bar when he realized that young adults in 1970s Manhattan could only meet at organized cocktail parties. Bars and public houses at the time were the dominion of beer-swilling men. Is it fair to say you got into the business because you wanted to meet women? Absolutely fair. <laughs> While designing a place where young ladies would be comfortable having a cocktail with friends, he added reasonably priced food to the menu to keep customers coming through the doors. And they did. Lines soon formed around the block, and Stillman hired doormen to handle the eager crowds. The bartenders became sought-after mini-celebs. Stillman claims he was the inspiration for Tom Cruise's character in the movie Cocktail. The phenomenon drew franchisees who were eager to recreate the excitement in their own cities. Stillman reports that it was the expansion to southern towns that saw the bar morph into a family restaurant. He says, that was the big change. It took six or seven years, but TGI Fridays became a very different animal. The original TGI Fridays was a fun, homey place with imitation Tiffany lamps and walls cluttered with antique memorabilia. New franchises mimicked the look, so guests could gawk at strategically placed road signs, live ferns, quirky Americana, taxidermy, and musical instruments. The commercial appeal called it, a place with so much atmosphere, you have to push it aside to get in. Competitors, including Ruby Tuesday and Bennigan's, copied the kitschy aesthetic, and the gimmick was lampooned in film restaurants like Waiting Shenanigans and Office Space's Tchotchkes. People can get a cheeseburger anywhere, okay? They come to tchotchkes for the atmosphere and the attitude. As more chains copied the look, quality began to decline, and the grandmother's attic or saloon decor soon became associated with lousy food. In 2005, TGI Friday started revamping the decor, discarding the antiques, and losing the server's flair and candy-striped shirts. New locations focused on minimalism. A prototype location in Texas featured blonde wood, juice stations, and open mic nights. But can it ever recapture the coolness factor it held in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Restaurant consultant Darren Tristano told Adweek, Today's younger consumer wants to go to a place that their parents didn't patronize, and certainly not a bar and grill from the 70s where you could pick up a flight attendant. Millennials are used to being blamed for the death of any industry or trend, so it should come as no surprise that they are also marked as one of the leading causes of the downfall of casual dining chains like TGI Fridays. According to Business Insider, millennials prefer fast casual chains like Chipotle or Panera Bread, which offer faster service, cheaper prices, and more customizable options. QSR reports that it is not only millennials who are flocking to fast casual restaurants, but also Generation Z, who will quickly replace millennials as the demographic that businesses will cater to. And what appeals to Gen Z? The generation that grew up with more adventurous taste buds apparently has an appreciation for authentic global flavors and healthy foods, and gravitates towards spaces where they can linger with friends without the nuisance of a waiter. What does this mean for TGI Fridays? With the younger generations predicted to vastly outnumber baby boomers and Gen X in the next few years, it seems mozzarella sticks and whiskey-glazed sliders aren't going to cut it much longer. Even for millennials who do have a hankering for loaded potato skins, Business Insider reports that they are far less likely to come into the restaurant to order them and will opt for delivery instead. While offering delivery to a demographic that values convenience and time may seem like a no-brainer for casual dining chain restaurants, the logistics of it require added expenses such as additional insurance and employing drivers. Third-party delivery services like Grubhub or DoorDash, which TGI Fridays uses for 122 locations, can ease the burden for chains anxious to offer delivery, but take quality control out of the company's hands. Plus, beverages, especially alcoholic ones, drive sales at casual dining restaurants. Since you can't have a tropical berry mojito shaker delivered, TGI Fridays doesn't get to upsell you a cocktail with your meal. 
One test program run by TGI Fridays in Texas offered delivery customers a way to get that cocktail after all. But it means two stops for delivery drivers who must fetch the food and mixers at the restaurant and the proper booze at a nearby liquor store. The drivers are trained to check for photo ID before they pass off the tequila. TGI Fridays launched its Endless Apps promotion in 2014, no doubt to rival the price-slashing promos going on at competitors like Chili's or Applebee's who offer deals like two entrees and a starter for $20. The Endless Apps deal featured a limited choice of appetizers, including nachos and pot stickers, which guests could continue getting refills of while only paying $10 each. No doggy bags or substitutions, and sharing was discouraged. One Gawker writer spent 14 hours in a Brooklyn TGI Fridays painfully polishing off eight plates of mozzarella sticks just to see if they would cut her off. They didn't. The promotion seemed like a limited time sort of thing, but TGI Fridays has permanently added the promotion to their menu. What can a seemingly money-losing promotion like bottomless appetizers mean for the quality of food or the level of service? According to many consumer reviews, it's only gone downhill. Complaints include servers not allowing doggy bags for other order items and deliberately waiting 30 minutes or longer to refill plates to encourage guests to give up and leave. That's not cool. While the chain has vowed to do a complete overhaul of its menu, with new additions like fire-grilled meats and seafood and larger servings of fan favorites like baby back ribs, it hasn't been enough to win over everyone who visits. Writers from Business Insider made a visit to a Manhattan location to sample the new and revamped menu, which included a ho-hum margarita, dry chicken wings, difficult-to-cut ribs, and mediocre potato skins. A newly added veggie burger and red velvet milkshake also failed to make the grade. The mozzarella sticks, however, were given a thumbs up. It was notable, though, that TGI Fridays tried to push back against the casual dining concept and focus more on their bar and apps. CMO Stephanie Perdue told Business Insider, I think it's all about returning to the roots of Fridays. TGI Fridays food is not perceived to be very healthy. When pitted against fast casual chains that offer fresh ingredients, global flavors, and more ways to customize menu items, TGI Fridays may have to rethink standardized offerings of frozen in the factory fare. If you visit a Chipotle, you can see someone making the fresh guacamole using real avocados. Visit a TGI Fridays and the appetizers look and smell exactly the same as the TGI Fridays branded frozen appetizers available at a supermarket. It's not just fast casual restaurants offering potential customers healthier meals with more variety. Grocery chains have increased ready-made meals available for purchase and have increasingly added delivery to the services they offer. Meal delivery kits like Blue Apron or Dinnerly give people what they need to create a restaurant-quality meal at home using fresh ingredients and little to no processed foods. With younger generations expecting healthier fare to be part of a tasty and economical meal, chains like TGI Fridays may be left in the dust. TGI Fridays has always been a restaurant aimed at middle-class America, so the decline of the middle class in the U.S. may be what's to blame for the loss of love for restaurants like TGI Fridays. CNBC reports that while 70% of Americans consider themselves to be middle class, the actual number of middle class families has been declining for decades and represents closer to 50% of the country. While some of those formerly middle class families are moving up the class ladder, many are now living paycheck to paycheck. And that group is more likely to opt for a fast food meal than a meal at a casual dining restaurant like Friday's, where checks average $14 per person. Even families earning six figures can fall into this bracket, especially in more expensive areas of the country. If lower earners are opting for fast food, where are the remaining middle class folks or the upper income earners eating? Urbanization and the revitalization of formerly blighted downtown areas has paved the way for an uptick in the amount of independently owned restaurants across the country, particularly in major metropolitan areas. Why dine on deep fried apps in a shopping mall parking lot when you can enjoy a farm to table meal prepared by a local chef? The nation's restaurant news cited a report from consulting firm Pentelect indicating that independent restaurants are expected to see up to 5% growth by 2020, almost double the amount of growth predicted for national chain restaurants like TGI Fridays. 
Consumers surveyed rated independent restaurants as winning in 12 out of 15 attributes studied, praising locally owned establishments for sharing their values, delivering higher quality food and service, and offering more innovative menus and decor. Says Bob Golden from Pentelect, people, especially millennials, are moving downtown to more gentrifying neighborhoods, and they're frequenting local establishments that are winning on these factors. In 2013, 13 TGI Fridays franchise locations were included in the 29 total bars the New Jersey ABC and Division of Criminal Justice investigated in a sting operation called Operation Swill. Officers found restaurants were not only switching premium brands with low-cost alcohol, but were also engaging in truly disgusting trickery like serving rubbing alcohol mixed with food coloring instead of scotch or filling liquor bottles with dirty water. TGI Fridays issued a statement shortly after the humiliating scandal, saying of the allegations, If accurate, they would represent a violation of our company's values and our extensive bar and beverage standards, which are designed to deliver the highest guest experience in our restaurants. According to YouGov, one of the biggest deal breakers for customers is finding out that a brand is treating employees poorly. It's one of the top three reasons people stop frequenting a place. Once that happens, 7 in 10 will never go back. That's why labor scandals for TGI Fridays have been such a big deal. In the wake of news that UK staff would get a portion of front of house service charge payments instead of a raise for 2018, YouGov saw TGI Fridays favorability ratings take a nosedive. According to Unite the Union, workers in several UK-based TGI Fridays walked out on strike a shocking five times, all over accusations of wage abuses. And in 2017, TGI Fridays agreed to pay a whopping $19.1 million to settle a lawsuit in New York that claimed the chain had failed to pay workers minimum wage, overtime, and that they mishandled tips. The settlement was a record sum at the time, says Waiter Pay. Imagine the location of a typical TGI Fridays. It's probably in a mall or near one. But mall traffic is declining, and according to Restaurant Business, more and more people are doing most of their shopping online. That's not just hurting stores, that's hurting the restaurants hoping to cash in on hungry holiday shoppers. For many restaurants, the fourth quarter of the year is their make or break. For Fridays, it may be the breaking point. Around 2010, TGI Fridays set its sights on the suburban market. They were hoping to capture a client base from suburban malls and their surrounding areas. And according to what the then CEO told Business Insider, that unfortunate decision led to declining sales and struggles. They're definitely not alone in the mistake. Other casual dining chains like Ruby Tuesday and Applebee's are in the same position as well. Looks like the clock might finally be striking midnight on this endless Friday. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus even more mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!